sensational appetizer. That's right. That's all it really was. Dark Zero Invertus Pro. It was an appetizer for the main course, the main meal coming up very shortly. G2, defending champions, juggernauts, going up against the hometown darlings of Team Bliss from Australia. We'll go to G2 first. And let me tell you, this is probably the most Australian on an SI broadcast you will ever see. Two Australian casters, Virtue from Australia, and then a whole team from Australia. This deep as well, guys, into the playoffs on the final day of the playoffs. Now, to set the stakes, you win this series, you go to main stage, you go to the arena, you get to make top six, you lose this series, and it is home time. Onto the plane, you go. It's been an intriguing tournament so far for G2. They topped Group A in a flawless fashion, went eight and zero in map count. Very difficult to take down, but unfortunately, they didn't have the best of starts. In the upper bracket, falling to FaZe Clan. It was an epic three mapper where they won the first and then unfortunately lost the next two. Down they went, Team Liquid though, unfortunately unable to match it with G2. So a 2-0. Well, them at that point in time now matching up against Team Bliss in another favored matchup. As for Team Bliss, well, this roster graphic is out of date, not because of the players, but simply because Wettable's mustache, it's gone. He lost that when they lost to SSG, but fortunately since then, it's been quite blissful for Team Bliss and they've made themselves a nice little run. Of course, in the group stage, it wasn't all that pretty. Certainly some moments that they would have learned quite a lot from. I'll bite they went up against some good teams. In the lower bracket though, they met their arch rivals from SCA in Fury. Probably not so much art rivals, more so just regional rivals. They won that one 2-1. Then they went up against Wolves for the Kajabillion time in the last 12 months. They always seem to meet. But this time, Bliss managed to pull off the Miraculous. They got the win 2-1. Ended up winning those two maps on Oregon and Consulate. Now, why is that relevant? Well, G2 also won against Liquid in their most recent match on Oregon and Consulate. And as you can clearly see here with the map vetoes, Oregon and Consulate play a heavy part in this map veto. We go to Oregon first, picked by G2. Team Bliss get their very favorable chalet. We head there as well. Clubhouse was a very interesting map, right? Clubhouse is typically a map they like to get, but clearly bombed out against Wolves. Got absolutely slaughtered. They are far more favorable now on chalet. I like this map veto for both teams because we've seen both teams play these maps quite extensively. The prediction though, in terms of the socials is indeed correct. As much bias as you can probably try to find as an Australian casting and Australian team, G2 are the utter heavy favorites. That is the storyline, guys. That is what we need to set. G2 should be running away with this. They should be winning this 2-0. Anything but, and we will be shocked. Let's jump in then. I think you've done a pretty good job at setting the stakes and the expectations heading into this one, fully anticipating a dominant performance from G2, but excuse us if Team Bliss get off to a raring start because we will no doubt get pretty excited. That could be Amaru, interestingly enough, off the board first. They're looking to perhaps tame a bit of aggression from the side of Team Bliss. Defensively, it's the Fenrir who will play no further part in this match. I would probably anticipate the Solace from Bliss, given that it has been a staple ban for them yep. throughout the entirety of this tournament and locally as well in the previous year. I think one thing to keep in mind is it does mean that Ying is available, mm -hmm. typically a staple ban here on Oregon and really powerful in dislodging a lot of key positions. So expect the Ying to be in play and probably the Warden in response from defense. Yeah, I wouldn't be opposed to seeing, say, the Grim also have a factor in play by both teams on attack of Oregon too. We've seen Grim become a very clear pick in terms of attacking operators. The Capital as well, both are really good at dis dislodging positions. Attackers need to Feels strange. We need to obviously kind of bring our tempo back down after one of the greater matches that we've seen this six, this six invitational. As we head to the opening map of this series, again, you lose this series, you go home. It would be a travesty for G2 defending champions to go out at the hands of a lowly team from Oceania. But they are no lowly team, no more. They are now the remaining, sole remaining team from APAC. 14 Bliss. That is what is on their shoulders. And they have shown at this six Invitational that they are nothing but a challenger, a threat, and a team that you must take seriously. For G2, they will be giving it their all and will be leaving no stone unturned to make sure they get past Team Bliss and get to the arena. Attacker's objective is to defuse a bomb. So let's jump in then. Round number one. Bliss on defense. Can they find comfort on this half? and give themselves a boost. They should be going into this game with little expectation and with that little pressure to perform. 
Although perhaps after beating the Wolves last night, they now have a sniff of success and are looking for more. It would be quite the tale if Bliss are able to take down G2. As we cast our minds back for the last time Os participated at this event. Six Invitational 2020, and it was fanatic to take down a wounded G2. Mm. First time G2 had lost at that event. It was different names inside of the server at this point in time, but the precedent is set that Aussie teams can play upset deep into this tournament. Yeah, straight away, good map control from G2 already. Two minutes into the round, and Bliss have pretty much foregone any kind of pressure up above. This is going to give G2 plenty of time. I like the fact that they've gone with the zero as well. Get those cams, get more information, especially towards site. I'll think to bring something a little bit different with those uh, particular gadgets. Because nothing up above from the side of Bliss, firmly on site right now. Statistically, this is going to be a very difficult matchup. I mean, in every single category, I mean, I'm not going to name them all because there's just too many. But G2 are better in every single statistical category coming into this match. Really sets the tone here. That Bliss are very much the underdogs. But Aussies love an underdog. 90 seconds into the round, 5v5. Bliss haven't really given up anything in terms of mistakes. G2, though, getting good positions. G2 also getting good information off of the zero gadget cams. Fisher guy holding towards freeze the stairs on the smoke. Goes old school in that approach. And a swing from Doki is successful. And the second one over towards Elbow is there. Is spotted. Flash a little bit weird. And in fact, Flashes himself doesn't matter though. Benja over towards that pillar position. And so far the kills for G2, but trades are coming back from Bliss. 60 seconds and the fast paced nature of G2 is causing some issues for Bliss. And Uno will compound that even more by getting rid of Oda. Smoke bomb from Fisher guy, but no pressure freeze. It does mean he can look in towards sight. Information gathering tools available with the Argus launcher from Uno. And in response to those smoke canisters, G2 not afraid to just slow down the pacing. Set themselves for a default plant. They know it's going to be difficult for Bliss to deny. Hard to swing this, but Fisher guy, shoulder check. Pretty good. Overlord's pillar. Can't win that battle. Neither can Sage as well. And it's G2 clinical to begin here on this Oregon attack. Taking this basement site. Really strong showing from them. Where they clearly showed that respect to Bliss. They went above, got that room clear game going. Did so very quickly. Got themselves into good positions. Over towards Z, they had big tower, opened up hatches, systematically got through their checklist really, really quickly, and then very emphatic with their approach as well when they started to hit site. I think it was around 90 seconds left in the round as well, so there was still plenty of time. G2 had just fast in their approach. You know, typically around a minute and 13 seconds in terms of that entry time. So they are one of the faster teams at this event. And it really does go to show what Bliss is going to be up against. They cannot put a foot wrong. And it's actually not even about making mistakes or the lack thereof. It's about... Can they play to that 110%? Can we find another level from Bliss? Because that is what is going to be required against this behemoth of a team in G2. If Bliss are to be even competitive in this game, I think it's fair to say that they'll need to have a life match and we'll have to see the best from these boys that we have ever. Yeah. Now, whilst being dominant locally in OS is one thing, and making top eight of SI is a commendable achievement. If they are to make main stage, they must win this game. And G2 round one, do not put a foot wrong. They bring the zero, gain good info. Positions cleared, not afraid to fall off plant late. In the face of an opportunity, for Bliss to deny it. So overall, a solid start on the attack. Love the attack of repicks here as well from G2. I mentioned that Grim when obviously it got through the band phase. Very strong on Oregon, especially towards Kid Storms where you can get a couple of positions on site cleared out. When Defenders typically like to be on site. Again, the pacing, though, from G2. Catching Brendo off guard, who's clearly been the MVP for Bliss at this tournament. But Ben just straight through Z in towards security. Early kill. Disadvantage now for Bliss. And again, G2 already sort of highlighting how fast of an attack they will go on Oregon. Mind you, this is G2's map pick. But the fact is, Bliss are on the defense. And Oregon is a very strong defensive-sided map. Doki now over towards this attic position. This is dealt with for now, but they should be able to get rid of that new Gemma, caused by Fisher Guy. And opens that up. And now position to go through. Another mute Gemma, though, at the planks, and we'll stop that drone momentarily. Yeah, when you think about Bliss and their competition locally, and probably even the opposition they've had so far in this bracket in particular, Wolves and Fury aren't known for extreme pace on the entry, whereas G2 continuously have been really fast on map entry. Looking to isolate Roamers, and unfortunately for Brendo, feels the wrath of that here in the second round. Down below, Alamao getting to work on the buck. Hit that skeleton key. Benja waiting for a bit of inf, but he'll lurk on the repel. Fisher needs to be very careful in this position. Rotaros as well to displace the defense. And it's just constant pressure weighing on the shoulders of Bliss. But Wettables responds. Good trade. 
teleport on an Ooh. island and Fisho. I said that Rapal would be key for G2, oh, but he's smacked clean. down. Doki, he doesn't miss. And now G2 have the advantage once more. Yeah, and showing the difference here, G2, I mean, that push there from Doki, he could have opted to try and make his way in towards Attic and then eventually push in towards Pit. Instead, just holds the sight line. Had a very good cross. And eventually, patience pays off. Down to just Odor and Fisher guy taking on Alamount, Uno, and Doki. Talk about what feels like a very difficult task. Love the angle here from Fisher in towards games. G2 are very much aware of this, but they can't stop him. Fisher up close. Another one as well outside of the Rappel, and he's strong with a shotgun in hand. From Fisher guy, the Rappel in now for Uno and the Ying. The Candalas go out effective, allows him to get in towards sight. Does have the kit. And fake it. He doesn't even need to. The swing, but it's Oda who gets the headshot onto Uno. Despite the very fast start to the round for G2, eventually Bliss were able to overcome that. Held steadfast on the defense and they win Kid Storms. Sharp trade there from Oda at the death, but I think for the most part through the mid round, Bliss actually doing a pretty good job at sustaining the constant pressure there from G2 with the likes of the Rappel, the Rateros, Vert down below. Also a player down after Brendo was isolated very early on inside of Kitchen. So credit there for Bliss. They do a good job at weathering that storm. Here is the replay package for round two. Freebie for Benja. Also a freebie there for Uno. Loki arguably as well, given an easy pick. But really good work from Fish in this position. Wards away the pressure top white. Able to deny the trade from the window. And then Oda sharp in the 1v1. Yeah, and I think early rounds as well, very important for Bliss when it comes to that mental aspect. Getting a couple of rounds on the board and just understanding, hey, we're inside of the server with G2, but we're going toe to toe. We're getting some round wins. So very important for them mentally. Fast rush, rush approach could be on the cards here for G2. They do opt to bring the Blitz here on the attacker repeat as we go back down to basement for the second time. Bliss obviously opting to head here rather than kitchen and meeting despite the fact they did lose basement it is very much the site that you want to play defensively on oregon so the blitz is brought i'm going to maverick the capital alabama making straight his way towards blue never mind ops against it so curious to see what the play will be to for g2 in this approach brendo the front door here does obviously deny and uh, fall back but alamount has now got backstairs control given pretty easily oda Wins that battle, though, over towards the hallway, and Doki falls early. No Flores, no Rotero, and another start for Bliss. Obviously going for that roam clear up above. Again, G2, I think, giving that respect over to Bliss, understanding we can't probably just rush site immediately. But that's job done now for Bliss. You've got the fight above four. Back to site they go, all five stack. Yeah, it was a risky fight for Oda to take. He was being live droned by the opposition, but he hits a really sharp shot, and that's now back-to-back -back clean kills from him. Critically as well, alive now for Kiba Barriers late into the piece. And that's going to absorb a lot of the attention of G2. I was going to say utility, but have a look at the count there for the attack. It's not particularly strong in that regard. Not really explosives to speak of. So instead, they'll be focusing on clearing out those positions with the likes of the Hive Launcher and the Flames from Uno. The Blitz can create space. The 4v5 means that options are limited. Blue stack double for Alamount and Benja with the Blitz and the Grim combination. Thought I saw a player maybe lurking around Freezer side as well. Could opt to go for a rotate laundry or backstairs, especially if it's going to be a blue hit. Where's Uno? Kit in hand. Virtue over towards security, opening up that hatch. Can drop down into Freezer. Uno bringing the kit over towards Blue Bunker. This is clearly where G2 now want to hit with that Blitz. Overload that elbow position, get themselves a free kill, make it a four versus four, and then look to get the plant in. I like the way that the Hive Launch is being used here, though, as well from Benja up close, because then no one can swing the doorway this point on giving them a bit of a chance to just kind of hold back. But now, the Blitz is rotating. G2 are trying their best to find a weakness in this defense. Laundry? It's relatively default, though, for Bliss. It was a nice angle from Oda. Mm. One Nitro in play. That Sage is in blue, though. Elemental's dropped. But the smoke immediately. So he has to just rush straight through this smoke. He's taken a lot of damage as well. 35 seconds time. In fact, that Virtue got the kill onto Fisher. Brendo now tucked in towards Freezer. Alamount keeping the pressure on. He can only do so much. Tried to pull out the pistol. That does not work. And then they get that kill as well. Watching in towards Freezer. Two versus two. Uno and Benja. 20 seconds. Plenty of time. Don't have to go for the rush plan. Sage inside a laundry. Could get pinched. It's down to the brothers. In Sage and Brendo. And they get the one onto Benja. Uno. Can he create the 1v1s? No. Brendo strong from Freezer. And a 2-1 start here for Team Bliss. Early days, and they're on the defense. No calls for alarms if you're G2.
a round like that, it's probably quite easy for Bliss to, instead of doubling down on the roam, instead look to play on site. Probably not the play though. Again, with the Capital Grim on the board, it is actually relatively easy to maybe, you know, isolate a player or two and give yourself the advantage on the attack. So the roam there from Oda early on to play contact on drones and, and the entry was a wise decision. And despite, again, being live drone and that fight probably not being favored, he pulls up clutch for his team. And then the rest of those on site doing their job nicely as well. Now, Brando has been so tremendous this tournament. So consistent as well. I think he got labeled MVP for yesterday. Start for him. His brother is for Sage. He's also got two. And typically in the past, when it comes to Bliss, Sage is usually the one you kind of look to. If he's having a good game, Bliss do really, really well. Especially at these international tournaments. So far, everyone is uh, singing the same tune. G2. Yeah, no real cause for concern, considering we now go to the tertiary site of Kitchen and Meeting. This, though, ends up being a big round. You win this, got Kid Storms that unlock. Then, of course, Basement unlocks again, and you can kind of snowball the rest of this half for the side of Bliss. The tertiary site now for G2 becomes not quite must-win territory, but certainly a big one that they would like to win. Capcam brought EDDs placed by Brendo. Bit of pressure over towards this Kitchen side. Trying to see if there's a lot of pressure up above in terms of the defense from Bliss. And I think it's just Wettables. Maybe Oda towards Big Tower as well. Not too sure. Hard to see from here. Brenda with a bit of pressure over towards security. Alam out in towards Big Tower. And droning it out as well. And yeah, I, th I think Oda's actually just tucked in towards Attic. Obviously trying to make sure that that hatch position is in control of Bliss for as long as possible. Been a hot and cold event for Oda. Struggled to get his Uno. self into tournament. But been playing well so far. Sage as well. Uh, Fire Performer is chipping away. He gets the opening kill. Benja as well, low, slain. And if Bliss want to make a statement in this match, winning the tertiary site on defense is one hell of a way to do it. Oh, they're just getting slaughtered. Doki also shot out too. They're just trying to make their way a little bit direct. G2 not opting for that top clear above, not looking to overload that adding position. How do you not win that? Sage had utility in hand and Doki still can't win it on the swing. Down Vert to an Alamount. And the two on five, 90 seconds left. Again, still opting for this more pressure on site attack from G2. Clearly falling apart though. And I do like the setup that we've seen from Bliss. Again, blocking off that attic push, electrified. The guy had Electro Claw from Oda, denying hatch, which makes it difficult. You need to clear up the buff. And they opt to go towards split main entrance. Bishow again, just good sight lines everywhere created by Bliss. And they've made it really difficult for G2. And as things stands, there's six Australians alive at the moment inside of the server, but there goes one, Brendo. One versus four for Virtue. Hard to say it's winnable though. They, he doesn't even have kit. 50 seconds left in the round. Slow push now. Through dining, making his way to see if he can catch someone off guard and kit to flash to come in. Seeing if someone wants to go for the swing peak. Oh, he expected that from Wetterboard, but Sage catches Virtue. And Bliss, with a 3-1 start, no over-celebrations, mentally locked in, focused all the way through to begin here on Oregon. The map pick of G2. On defense, it's a 3-1 start. G2 don't look too worried. If Bliss continue to be competitive in this match, I'm quite intrigued to see just how resilient G2 are going to be and if there'll be perhaps a tipping point in this matchup where the pressure does get to them a little bit. Very early days here, and the four rounds down. Winning the tertiary site, though, for Bliss is a big W in that column. Set themselves up nicely now for the primary sites. You look back there in the previous round, G2 taking a lot of isolated fights, which, again, isn't inherently bad. When you're trying to split that attack and create space and find a couple of gunfights, find an opportunistic play here or there. But Bliss are mechanically sound at the moment. It's been one of their strengths. And their awareness has certainly ramped up as the tournament's gone on. Just speculating from G2's perspective on things, the first couple of rounds to me felt like they were giving a lot of respect to Bliss, doing a good job clearing out, making sure that they don't look to go too direct to site. That round though, especially Uno, on the nook through Z, it's like, hey, can we get aggressive here? Can we maybe get in their face a little early in the round? That fast play style of G2 that we know is typically quite successful. Bliss were ready for it. Had really good sight lines and probably anticipated a bit more of a horizontal approach. I knew they had Attic locked down, didn't have to worry too much about up above anyway. And while there's no 
pause for alarms. There will be if this gets to, gets to like 5-1 territory. D2 probably only need two attacking rounds, guys. We say that quite often, especially when it comes to Oregon. Even still in this meta. And even then, as well, mind you, Bliss's attacks have not quite been the cleanest at this tournament. And so, therefore, they need as many defensive rounds as possible. Benji will open up some sight lines in towards games. Fisher obviously holding close with a shotgun. Oh! Oh, hello? You see him! You see him! He's dead! Benja! A little bit napping! Fisher guy goes to six! Advantage Bliss! Elsewhere, big tower. Alamal head to head with Oda. The, the vigil had been spotted before on the scanner. But G2 couldn't quite capitalize upon that information. In the meantime, Bliss do get the opening pick as Benja tried to get cheeky on the breach. You know as well, taken low. And the pressure from Bliss so far has been really quite phenomenal. A team from a minor region, a team with no expectation in this tournament, showing that they're here to play and they are not going to be pushed over easily. And it's at this point now, G2, if they haven't gotten the message, it's pretty much loud and clear. This is not going to be an easy... Series, not an easy match at all. Uno on the balcony outside, low on health on that Ossa. Big part of probably what they want to do is get in, place that Talon Shield down, get a bit of presence, go for that plant. Look at the rotate and the roam from Oda on the vigil down below. But watching his Alamel, oh, he still can't win it. Oh, even in the anticipation of that push from Oda, Alamel can't hit the shot. He's 0 and 5, and Oda's 5 and 2. Brendo elsewhere. Could be even close to timeout territory if you're G2 with 60 seconds left in the round. Uno just gets decimated through the front door. And Virtue as well through big window. Flawless from Bliss. A 4-1 start on the map pick of G2. The perfect start for the Darling team from Oceania. They have to go 5-1 though. 4-2 gives G2 that window of opportunity to bring this match back. Again, with it being quite defender-sided overall. That said, big positive notes for Bliss are their ability to confidently close out rounds. They're doing a decent job in getting the opening pick, finding win conditions. They're also shutting down key players. Alamo, as you mentioned, 0-5. Fisho getting an opening pick relatively easily on Breach, and the flank quad shut down. Frustrations already starting to set in a little bit for G2. Their map pick... Their series to lose. Their hammer to forfeit. Yeah, I agree. I think 5-1 here is so necessary. It's not the ultimate win condition. It's not exa exactly as if you, if they don't get 5-1, they can't win it out. But we've already mentioned Blizzard's attack, especially on a map like Oregon, where there's a lot of key positions that need to be dealt with, will not be an easy task against G2. So despite the scoreline, Despite the start that we see here, it is defense Oregon. There are expectations to do well on it. Can they get to that 5-1 scoreline though, which is a real good half from Blizz. 4-2 does then sour things a little bit going into the second half. Big round from G2. So far, they've just struggled for the basics, getting into the map. They haven't even really been able to do that. And so what do you bring when you can't get into the map? You bring the Montang, you bring the shield play. You can help them as well on site later in the round. And Alamo obviously goes scouting. As Bliss have been aggressive so far. Although, currently, five Bliss members on site. Means for G2 once again, last time out when we saw this site earlier on. It means G2 should be able to be quite offensive. Up above. Gas babe again. Fisher Guy denying this freezer push. G2 th will thrive in this 5v5 environment in the late round. The Capital combined with the Monty and the Grim to zone out space will make it really challenging for Bliss to hold down key positions without their positions itself known to the attack. Key fight over towards Freezer then. Fisho is staring down Monty. You know, meanwhile, opens up the hatch with the secondary hard breach. And it just means now that Fisher is on a little bit of an island. Can't get back towards the side itself for free. So we'll now just be staring down Alamau. Elsewhere, meeting hatch opened up. And it's Doki on the floor is to clear key pieces of utility. Such an important round for both teams. G2, with all their experience in these sorts of moments, they're anticipating a strong response and for Bliss to find it challenging. But can they rise to the occasion? One gas babe available for Fisher Guy, of course, very much makes it a little bit more trickier for Alamount to try and push through this freezer position. He has gone for a rotate, though. Now opting towards laundry. 
and away from Fisher Guy, and away from that smoke. Keep a barrier in play, though, of course. Roteros can still come through. Virtual takes a bit of damage. Oda completely dislodged, though. Well done from G2. That's much better in their approach in these rounds. Good angles from Virtue over towards Freezer. Will there be a swing now from Bliss? They've been quite successful at those so far in this half. Hive Launcher now being used by Benja with only one canister remaining in the chamber. Along with the smokes and the incendiaries available now for Capita, it feels like it's execute time for G2. Vulcan canister pop. Trying to deny that push over Freezer. It's a Freezer laundry here. Doki can still come and he does. Drop E-Box. Watching with Sage. That felt like a big part of the win now for G2. Now they can turn all of their attention towards this laundry and Freezer side. Sage gets the trade, but the pistol from Alamal confirms Sage. Down to Wettables and a one on three with a shield in his face. This becomes so difficult. Double kill with a pistol from Alamal. G2 get a very much needed second round here in this first half. It's a 4-2 lead at the half for Bliss. But those two attacking rounds will be so pivotal for G2. Yeah, really well played by G2. As we sort of prefaced in the 5v5 late round, they are probably favoured to win it out. With the composition that they had, you could see the Grim, especially through Freezer, meant that Fisher couldn't aggress on the cross, couldn't support Odo, who got caught on the swing and was immediately shut down after being flushed out by the Rotero drone. Monty then followed all of that up, able to go deep and disrupt that closet position, making it very challenging for Bliss deny space and the site itself 4-2 scoreline bliss hitting the the benchmark i suppose would have loved the 5-1 lead however g2 up to the task yeah really strong from alamount on that pistol play from the montang and clearly much better work from g2 changed things up a couple of times you know first cut it was like okay let's try and set alamount down freezer then they rotate him over towards laundry Eventually, that was uh, probably the right play, considering he didn't have to contend with the gas bait with Virtue Guy. Virtue then gets a really good angle. I think maybe because Bliss then thought, okay, well, the Montang has shifted over towards Laundry. That's where the hit's going to be. But G2 kept the pressure over towards that Freezer side as well, creating that pinch. Despite the fact that Bliss was even able to get that kill onto the E-Box drop from Doki, didn't matter. Bender aggressive over towards Garage. Trying to see if he can catch someone from Bliss. Caught a little bit unaware in terms of their surroundings. They should be aware that this is a possibility. And D, they will drone it out. Oda's no, been around the block for a long, long time. He's not new to this game. He understands what can be a threat here from G2 and the way that they're going to play these basement sites will be aggressive. Fisher Guy, a very prominent Montane player. Certainly on Oregon, I think he will be necessary in helping push forward into site eventually for the side of Bliss against G2. Uno looking to contest that though, at least for a little while longer and stall out the push here from the Monty. Doesn't want to fall for his life, but if he can stall time, capture a couple of drones, that will be a win in his column. Fisher to just play lockdown. Doki elsewhere though, lurking around. Now in through Z, we'll play contact with Oda. Been a great start for Oda on the north. Certainly would like to get something early here in the round for Bliss. I swear from Uno, just disrupting Fisher Guy on the Monte, making sure he can't get that full backstairs control. Alamau aggressive over towards Blue, has thrown out a gas babe already. And a really strong forward facing shield too. Again, showing the aggressiveness of G2, but that Rotero from Brendo gets through. So that shield does get taken down. That was kind of hindered that Blue Bunker hold now for G2 defensively. It worked from the Flores in Brendo. Still has two more Roteros in play. And that was also a second gas babe thrown by the side of Alamau. He only has one more remaining. Benja. Now, spots one. He doesn't opt for the repeat. And you know what? He doesn't need to. He can kind of fall back over towards security. And Alamau eventually lost his life. I imagine the re-aggress towards Blue Bunker without that shield. And he gets punished by Wettables. Benja now trying to find his way back towards site. Mindful that the rotation may be cut off. But eventually makes trained. it to top stairs. While yeah, stoned out. Confirmed. Oda might look to lurk now on the Nook as Uno responds through Blue. Mm, not sure. I I'm assuming Uno just got super aggressive there. Only one drone left, by the way, for Bliss. So in terms of site information, not a whole lot of it, but they do have the Montane that they can play off of. Brendo to play them behind Fisher Guy. 40 seconds remaining. Bender on the other side of Pillar on that ward. And if there's any flashes that come through, of course, he can deal with that. Gave himself open momentarily. Brendo couldn't find the head. Loses his brother elsewhere. And Oda as well to fall to Virtue. Fisher Guy continues to pull forward. Can he get the pistol in play? He goes for it, but it falls short. Brendo by himself on back stairs, and G2's defenses look pretty strong. Nice headshot from Brendo, but this becomes a very difficult task. 20 seconds left, and a one versus two. The kick close by, the flashes to go out. No more Warden in play. He doesn't go for the kit, instead he's opting for the kills. Needs to find them very quickly. At this point, you have to run and gun. The swim from Doki.
Though as soon as he knows he's in the hallway, is so strong. And D2 now making the mark here on Oregon. Bliss very much understanding this is still an uphill battle. Stark contrast in terms of attack there. Bliss not entering over to a small tower. That allowed the likes of Benja to roam around quite freely. We saw it from Doki as well inside of Z. A minute into the most attacks from G2, most of the map outside of the objective floor itself were typically vacated by the defense. Whereas G2 had more free reign off site just to garner a little bit more information, apply a little bit more pressure. Bliss then forced into more of a linear push really rotating around the Montang itself, back stairs, bit of blue pressure as well, um, which unfortunately was squandered as well by Uno. So the attacking prowess from Bliss, not quite up to the same level as what we saw from G2 in that first round. And again, that's why we were prefacing the last round of the first half as being so important for Bliss. A 5-1 lead would have given them that cushion to warm up into the attack, but obviously now goes without saying, G2 right on the heels of Bliss once more. Yeah, they are. And obviously Bliss are aware of that in Fairness, though, at least back home locally, that's the kind of site I think even Bliss would lose locally. It's these other tertiary sites, kids' dorms, along with kitchen and meeting. Those are going to be the sites that Bliss ultimately need to win. So this becomes a very big round in this eighth round. Not necessarily must win, but it is suddenly a big, big round for Bliss. Unable to win out down in the basement. Laundry and supply, Doki, aggressive into bedroom. Obviously with that forward-facing shield under the, under the balcony. Double push right now from Bliss over towards Big Tower. That's going to be Wettables and Brendo. There is one up there. It's Uno on the water. Rips the Nitrous off. Has been drawn. That's so clean from Uno. And the Nitrous as well for good measure. No. Doesn't get the kill onto Wettables. He is getting droned out. He is getting beat out as well. But so far, he's at least taken one. And now also taking all of the attention of Bliss towards this Big Tower position. Flash, but of course, it's the Warden. Now the Frag Grenade as well. Warden can't really deal with that, so he pushes forward into the bees. But he also fires back again. He's so low, taking a lot of time. And the swing in from Wettables got so over aggressive. And Uno gets two from Big Tower, proving how difficult he is to dislodge. What can Bliss do now? He's so low. Finally, Oda will get rid of him. But job done from Uno. Yeah, what a play there. Just missed steps. Perhaps could have held on for at least a little while longer, but difficult. To be negative in response to a play like that, even though it may have petered out towards the end. The damage already done. Minute 30. 4 3 scoreline in favor of Bliss, but a 4 3 man count now in favor of the defending world champions in G2. From here, it's difficult to see Sage and the rest of the team clutch up. And again, that storyline persists. In O's, we would not count out Bliss from this position, but. All different level now of competition where we fully expect G2 to close this one out. Pretty aggressive extension, it must be said. With half, uh, bedroom rather reinforced. And also muted off by Benja. That can be cleared though down below and the wall now should be opened up. Keep the barriers to stall things out. The deployable shield still standing on the staircase. Doki may elect to stay. And a keep barrier to support that position. It was Oda. He got blown up by that Nitro. Fisho trying to dodge another. Unfortunately for Bliss, unlocking this round will be tough. Yeah, Virtue's been so consistent so far. Sage to just push through Trophy, gets himself a kill. Ben just still inside a pit. Fisher Clash should be aware of this. Never mind, he wasn't. Got caught. And Doki as well. I've got Sage. A very strong defense from G2 showing here on Oregon. Their map pick in this series as they bring that scoreline back from 4-1 to now 4-4. But Bliss understanding full well this was always going to be a difficult task. Attacking into this defense of Oregon of G2. It's why we put the emphasis on them probably needing those five defensive rounds. Now, they're staring down the barrel of a G2 comeback that then turns into a lead. Not just there yet, though. Into the ninth round, we go to kitchen and meeting. Tertiary site. Probably now must win site. But this is the moment here as well in the round where it was all pretty much done. Uno getting the double kill here. Where the balls at that point repelling in because Uno was taking that contact fight elsewhere. And they just didn't really have the utility to get the final kill. Really strong round from G2. By attackers. And this is where Bliss just need to probably hold on for dear life. Just stay in this contest. Get around. Just keep that kind of scoreboard flowing. Ticking over. Phenomenal job then from G2. And Uno in particular in that previous round. 
I think for Bliss, it's all about either ramping up the pace a little bit and getting some more map control, or really making sure that key power positions are dealt with with a little bit more finesse. The meeting with Go. Double hard breach on the board for Bliss. We're going to break down this setup as much as they possibly can. An early drone work now. Over towards Small Tower. An opportunity, though, still to split this attack and Sage may well look to do so. He's on the ramp. May look to post up above. Information inside of Dining for the attack. Team Bliss seeing if they can hunt down Virtue. Uno, though, close by in support. Over towards Showers. Fisher guy finds the opening kill on to Uno. A redemption, a reprieve for that last round, but Virtue finds a trade elsewhere on the map against Brendo. Keeps it at that four versus four territory. So far, Virtue's been so consistent throughout this game of Oregon. Was one of the standouts, at least on the attacking half, doing again well here in the defensive half. A drone doesn't make its way through. Five remaining, four Bliss. But it's Wettables. Does eventually shut down Virtue. It felt like it's holding a key position over towards Dining. Gets rid of the Azami, and they've also dealt with that Warden. Suddenly things open up, an opportunity for Bliss, and it forces Doki into action, up above and towards Kid's Dorms, keeping at least a little bit of that Vert pressure. As the drones come through, Ram, very important on a site like this. Is that a missed drone? Doesn't really pay dividends anyway. 90 seconds left, and still that top floor control for G2, very prevalent. I think at this point, Bliss have a really good read as to where this defense is positioned and what the game plan is for G2. You can really feel the effect of that solar span and Bliss gathering a lot of key information. Now it's all about playing off that, capitalizing upon the positions that they have and the advantage that they have worked so hard for in this round. You let this slip, and for Bliss, it might be difficult to get back in this match, but Fisho, a double kill here in round nine. Benja and Doki. Two star players to try and clutch up for G2. Benja going for a play over towards top back stairs inside a big tower. 50 seconds left. He spots one on the repel. This could be a freebie. It's Wettables on the ace. Not too sure if he's aware of Benja's position. He's slipped in. Yeah, he's got no idea. Free kill for Benja. Information though provided for Bliss. They now know exactly where one of the two players is remaining. Gumine stepped on for Fisho in towards site. Doki coming in from classroom though. Benja up towards Attic and he's already catching off Sage. Fish needs to get the plant down. Oda to provide cover, but where's that cover? He doesn't even know really where to look. One up above, but he's got no idea. Plant goes down successfully. Now they know Benja's up above. Doki though, coming through security, but they have already dispersed away from the site. Spotted, Oda, it's a shoulder shot. Then plays the keeper barrier. Thank you very much, Virtue, says Oda. Needed that one. Now Benja in a one on two. Is Bliss looking to take this tertiary site to give themselves back the lead? Benja knows where one is. The Nitro Cell was the right idea. Pulls it back, then back out again, but it doesn't hit the mark. And suddenly this becomes very difficult for Benja. As he gets lit up inside a kitchen. Has to just stick this plan. At this point, pros do not fake, but Oda's a pro himself. Bliss take the lead. Five to four on Oregon on G2's map pick. Super important that Bliss get the plant down. Very difficult, it must be said, for Oda to cover against both defenders. Positions, not certain. Vertical lines of sight, awkward to contest. Fortunately, though, for the Aussies, the plant was confirmed, and then the keeper barrier from Uno used against the opposition. Unfortunate for G2, a valiant attempt on the retake, but they've shown some weakness now. On that tertiary site, can Bliss smell blood in the water and convert a primary objective? Because we're going now back to basement. And the challenge continues for Bliss. And that's where it's going to be quite difficult. And this is where G2 have looked really strong on these kind of more default sites, if you will. I mean, obviously, tertiary site, kitchen and meeting, that's where attacking into Oregon, you're going to have to find those rounds. Bliss were able to do that. You give them the credit. But this is where G2 can look to get themselves probably a 6-5 lead, say, winning basement, then winning kids' dorms again. It does no now mean, though, for the side of Bliss, getting themselves that particular round does then open it back up again later on. We go to basement though for G2. They're looking quite strong when it comes to these very much on-site defensive holds. But Bliss have opted to change up their approach quite dramatically. It's a clear but then a rush later on. I can't imagine it's going to be that fast-paced rush with just the blitz through Blue Bunker. When you bring the Jackal, you bring that Finca, you are going to be clearing. The Maverick to open up the hatches. But then later in the round, you've got to now contend with a fast-pushing blitz. Fisher with the entry over towards Small Tower. And away Bliss go with his very intriguing lineup. Double drones, in fact, triple from Bliss. 
plus the, the blitz itself. Blitz for bliss. So it should be relatively easy for them to ascertain what is and isn't being contested by the defense. Now Benja is off site side of lobby. Nitro Saldo a little bit too early. Trying to catch the Jackal of Sage. Oh, it doesn't matter. Line of sight. The Benja, he blows the Nitro, then holds up with the SMG, can fall back. Bliss now in a four versus five. A tough objective made even more challenging. Still a lot of time remaining in this round, but no, Jackal makes that clear a little bit more annoying, although G2 not really playing into that roam now, and they've got that player advantage, as we typically see on Oregon. Now you just go back down to basement, take that player advantage, makes it very difficult for the attack to overload certain positions. Still complain to that blitz. It's still probably a bigger win condition than the Jackal, but again, really sort of highlighting what G2 can do on these sites, pop up, get a kill, pop back down. Makes it really annoying. The Fisher guy's going a bit quick here. Good backstairs control. Little peek down over towards that pillar. Loki holding around that angle on the Azami. Fisher guy gets his own drone out now. And Brendo looking to clear out this position in terms of that hot facing Heber barrier. Takes a peek on that Binker. Has three adrenal surges. Again, can really make this rush happen. He loses his life and it will be a little bit more annoying for Bliss. He box droned out. Three drones is all that remains for Bliss. Again, really good. Nitro Salt from Uno, though. Right onto the face of Fisher Guy. The shield can't do anything to stop that. Flashes from Bliss. Do they go off of that? No. Hold their positions. But suddenly now they are staring down the barrel of a 10th round defeat. Very strong defensive hold from G2. Not really making any kind of mistake. And again, Baseman is theirs. Oh, so convincingly. 5-5. Five, five. Uno has been incredible. Throughout this map so far, several moments where he's really stepped up and found a kill or found some space or held a part of the map. That has been a huge condition for G2 and getting that round across the line. Nitro there to dismiss the Blitz. Huge. If Fisher is able to get control there and facilitate the pushback stairs into blue for default, again, could have really changed the perplexion of the round. But unfortunately for Blitz, and it's been a story for them throughout this tournament, Sometimes they can find it so challenging to shut down just one key player and that unravels them, especially on attack. So Mingran calls the attack in response. 60 seconds for the boys to chat it over. We are going back to another primary site though. Four out of the last five rounds for G2 clearly have now got the momentum in this match. Despite the fact that the scoreline is five to five, of course, Bliss got out to a significant 4-1 lead. All right, defense on Oregon is a big reason for that. As the timeout does come to a close now for Bliss back into the server, Again, it's these aggressive plays from G2 on the defense, though. They're pushing up backstairs. They're peaking Blue Bunker. So they're making it very difficult for Bliss to even get in towards the site because of their aggression. Really well played from G2. And so far, again, they're very much in the driver's seat here to close this one out. Kids Storms, after this kitchen meeting again, you would imagine, could opt to switch it over to dining. But nevertheless, they are in pole position. So it's up to Bliss now. Two sites, two tertiary sites, no more basement, at least for regulation, to try and salvage this map. Of course, it is, though, G2's map pick. But Bliss started off really, really hot. So into round 11, top floor. Defensively, nothing standing out as being hugely um, unusual. Jaeger is in play, though, so a decent amount of catch to try and help fortify, uh, keep our positions. Five seconds. That would have been a good counter to the Grim, for instance. Um, another piece of utility, although the Grim now has been swapped off. The Ying is in play. Oh. And I must say, I feel like we've probably seen a lack of Ying, at least compared to what I expected on a map like Oregon. So a big condition for Bliss, especially uh, if they want to play around it, would be to take down the ward. Well, they don't have hard reach, and they can't get through Attic now. That's just been re at all. So they could go big window here. It's not necessary. Yeah, I mean, they could. Certainly makes it a little bit more annoying. They and are droning it, though. Yeah, I mean, outside of that, outside of this one little position in terms of that attic wall, you don't really need it anywhere else, but it also means you can't hit games. Yeah. No secondary brought by Fisher Guy for the record in terms of that capital. So that's maybe, a, I don't know if it was a misequipment play. It certainly should have brought at least one hard breach here. It could come back to bite this or for whatever reason, it could work out. We've seen funny things happen so far at this event. Certainly an opportunity, though, for G2. A couple of Nitro Souls as well in terms of utility that Alamal and Virtue both possess. And again, a lot of these positions on site now quite anchored in. Games don't have to worry about. Attic Wall don't have to worry about. So it's these White Stairs positions. It's the Armory Corridor position. Big window. 
G2 can very much win this round pretty convincingly because of the fact there's no hard breach for Bliss. So Shower Corridor, these kind of white stairs positions, these are the big win conditions now for Bliss. You must win these fights. You've got to be able to win Big Window. So if you want to pull off an execute Big Window, you will need pressure down below to negate plant de denial, such as a Nitro Cell. I believe it's the Valk of Virtue down below currently. So we'll see if Bliss are able to pinch that out. Nitro from Elamau as well, and that can be sent in across the double window position. Will Bliss be able to pull this round off unconventional? We don't typically see this kind of setup from them. No. I, I think Fisher is probably meant to have secondary. That's my guess. Nitro Cell towards top white though. Misses the mark. So that's one out of two. Nitro Cell's gone. Can Dallin out for Odo, and as I said, can make their way in towards Attic from this very position, but they... Lose out to Virtue and Uno because they essentially have to just go in in terms of that one-dimensional attack. Wettables on the rope, Repel in through the smoke and through the flames and can find the kill. Very strong from Wettables, but Benji gets the kill back onto Fisher Guy anyway, keeping the advantage with G2. And the Repel is successful oh. from Oda. But the trades continue for G2. They had the numbers on site and they didn't really have that many avenues that they needed to worry about. Once they cleared that battle over towards White Stairs, Virtue can then play it, understanding the rest have to come through the repels. He has a good position, can't get cleared out. And G2 will punish Bliss. Match point for G2 here on Oregon. 6-5 as they take the lead for the first time here on this map. Fantastic work there from G2. Despite a couple of nice repels in towards the objective from Bliss, which were able to turn the tide a bit, power position still held. And it did feel like that idea was a little bit undercooked from the Aussies. Good attempt from Wet. Oda hitting a very sharp shot there. But unfortunately, not at any point during that did Bliss look like they were going to be able to dislodge the player down below. Nor was Kids Dining. under heaps of pressure. So the plant was never going to realistically be an option. Dining for the final round of regulation. So an intriguing selection here from G2. I think it's the second Malusi pick I've seen this whole tournament. Uh, in terms of the games that I've been able to cast slash watch. Match point for G2 here on their map pick of Oregon. They've been very strong in their defense. Bliss have so far only been able to win the one attacking round that was on kitchen and meeting. This time around, it's kitchen and dining. And that scoreboard highlighting a five out of six round lead for G2. Really dominant in this comeback. Down 4-1 early on. Bliss looks strong in control on the defense, but matched. Replicated by G2, even one better. Benja aggressive with this drone. What's the mozzie being utilized here by G2? Hence why Benja is able to do this. And a lot of information as well being gathered. Sage red pinged out on the repel towards small tower. Large focus for Bliss has to be this small tower site because it is a dining site, not meeting. Those drones can only be outside for 10 seconds, but that's a long time to garner information. Relay that to the rest of the team. Ben just spotting multiple players outside small tower. He'll be feeding that to Virtue, who <laughs> aggresses on the shield. <laughs> Timing oh, not easy. going the way of Bliss. Sage falls while reloading. No trade. And G2 looking dominant here on Oregon. Yeah, the mental pressure right now for Bliss would be through the roof. Understanding it's match point round for G2. Down a player early on. Can they flush out Virtue? The other Aussie on the other team. MP grenade thrown by Wettables. Warden. And they go for the vault in. Oh, he's just too good. The OG makes a big play for G2. And they will take Oregon. Flawless, basically. Yes, Brenda got one at the end. But essentially flawless for G2. Two, one map away here in the lower bracket from progressing forward, looking for that destiny battle against Dark Zero. They take their map pick of Oregon. Fantastic work there from G2, able to collect two critical attacks in the first half, and from there, Bliss struggled in the second. Smiles all around from the G2 squad. They'll be pretty pleased with that result for Bliss about picking themselves back up for map number two. Yeah, it certainly is. Obviously, G2, though, far too good on that defense. Very alarming if you're a Bliss fan because that was just too clinical from G2. Basically had their way with Bliss's attacks. At times on the defense, of course, Bliss looked very, very strong. We, we gave them the plaudits. But in terms of attack, G2 just suffocated. They made it very difficult. And it's mainly because G2 just weren't sitting back on site. They were very aggressive. They were pushing these positions. They were getting early kills. A lot of the times, the opening kill went the way of G2. They're making that happen. They're setting the tone, setting the pace. And you can clearly see the discrepancy between these two teams. One is a world champion. The other one, of course, comes from a very minor region. 
Despite that, though, still a 7-5 scoreline. Not too bad, not too shabby. An honorable map loss. But for Bliss, honorable losses, all that's going to do is send them out of the tournament. Yeah, I mean, a respectable result here for Bliss is great and I'm sure fulfills them with confidence going forward. But they're not looking forward at the moment. They want to put in their best performance here in this best of three and they need to play at their very best yeah. if they're to bring this one back. Well, short break here is required after that first map here for the best of three. Don't go too far though. When we come back, it will be the map pick of Team Bliss looking to respond on Chalet. Those numbers mirroring attacker and defender win rates on most of the maps. <laughs> Stylistically, this I think this has been one of the best matchups of the tournament so far, just because of how chalk and cheese it is. Now, mm. Nick, where do you stand? <laughs> Strategy? <laughs> it, oh, he's to your right. He's standing to my right. <laughs> I'm standing far right, actually, yeah. No, I, I think it will come down to... Uh, I'm in the middle. I'm going to call it the mini executes. <laughs> yeah. Where it's Take like a, a mixture of yeah. both, right? You need to set up your thing strategically, but then three to one execute. Shallot plays out like that for most bomb sites, but we also know this is the map. WCNM on defense, they all Altered the meta. Thankfully versus G, they start defense. They can build up some rounds, but I fear for their attacks to come. Now I promise I wasn't coming. I was trying not to say these words on the cast, oh, but God. say that chalet and you say altered the meta. They basically showed how Split Fairy is played on this oh. map. Um, and I know oh, it's the buzzword. I know it's no. the topic, and I know you hate it. But yeah, that's exactly what they did. I mean, you're not wrong. We hate the word, but you are indeed correct. And the thing is. SSG, I do think that if they can get a couple rounds here in defense, maybe the first, like, let's say, two in a row or three in a row, yeah. WCNM, they've not really been in this position as reigning major champions where we might go home, this might be over. So we have to also question the reigning major champions' mindset of, okay, how do they do under not just pressure, but fear of going home, not playing in front of your home crowd, and not making it to the expected level that they should be at. This is the 21st map that W7M has played so far in this event. Far away, a full series ahead of the next closest. Now this is numbers, these are numbers coming into today's match. Obviously we don't have the numbers for what happened with VPDZ. We know the results over there, we're not gonna spoil it for you. G2 and Bliss is going on on the other stream at the moment as well. And we're not gonna spoil that either, but 21 maps is a crazy amount of Siege to play. And they've still got so much more to go if they want to make the grand final. Is there some fatigue that starts to kick in for this W7MT? It's certainly a change. Like, if yeah. you look at how uh, teams play during the domestic leagues and best of ones, if I remember rightly, W7M qualified to the Atlanta Major on like nine maps, yeah. for example. Yeah. Something like that, nine, ten maps. The point is, they play double that at yeah. this event only. So, surely there's a factor because the teams are just not used to it. Okay, things just wow. start off for a cafe. Okay, uh, what? all right. What? So they were trying to spawn peak. They did a little bit of damage to hurts, but then they said, you know what, the gig is up. We're gonna get two kills. So this is like cafe, right? HD, they wanna control the pace, they wanna set the tone. They still go for it. It's still happening. Yeah, I know, I'm sorry. He hasn't stopped. Poor JV, he's stuck in spawn. Ashton is still going. <laughs> he's new new objective, get in the map. Get in the building. Oh, I mean. The thing is, right, from a player perspective, we had like, what, a 10 minute break, players are like, they're taking a, a you know, bathroom break, etc., talking, strategizing, etc., preparing. You're getting cold. You go on the server, bang, spawn peaks, catch opponents off guard. No, 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 no. They were ready for it because, again, you did this so many times with your SSG on Cafe previously, you're gonna expect it again. Forrest will get one kill onto Fairly Pox, but it's still the defenders, or defenders rather, playing for a man deficit. This site's actually a really curious one for me because yeah. the way that North American love to play it and North American teams love to play it is they like to do these big cross clears and end up in library really late into the round and then drop into site. Whereas Brazilians and European teams tend to just attack library and, and the site all far in ga uh, games directly because you just need to clear out two positions. You need to clear out the library position, you need to clear out stock, and then you can plant. So obviously Forrest is playing inside of stock and needs to be cleared out should the be 7 and want to do that. But North American teams love this site, whereas other regions do not. Ashen is itching for another engagement through the window. As it's KZ now to take some damage from Ashen. Finally, E1D is burned by JV92 as we just surpassed the halfway mark of round number one. And Ashen finally gets dealt some damage and ends up being fatal as Herds out on the balcony subdues the youngster. 
J90 engaging towards JV92, keeping numbers close, but still benefiting W7M. All those Kiva barriers that J90 has inside a library. Working wonders as he just sees the cab, but he can't do much against Nade. And then there's KZ, who got the first two picks to suppress Forrest, finish him off, and W7M goes up on round number one. Great rotations there from W7M. Looked for something direct, it wasn't quite happening, and then split themselves all the way across the map, leaving one library. Piano window coming back through solar, all of those different places. And in the end, J90 was like just too worried about all of, you know, everywhere at once. It's what we talked about from W7M, and it's how they revolutionized this map. I was a bit worried actually for W7M because I was afraid wow. that they weren't getting enough things done in the server after they got these first opening kills. And again, oh, on the way back into the building, that's where he died. That starts in this. Yeah. That's one pick was actually kind of genius. So the mute went yeah. out to try and get the, the enemy to look towards the mute. Obviously, he would be too fast by dropping straight back and coming in game's window. And then you spawn peek off the back of it. But W7M are, uh, are wise to it, apparently. Apparently so. I'm keeping that one for the ranked strap book, though, Nick, I'll be honest. <laughs> we can try that one, In about yeah. a week's time. Yeah, that's the one thing when you're at these events. I'm kind of itching for some siege at this point, you know? We just play a lot before this event, but not here. I obviously am nowhere near as good at this game as either of you. However, I get that same itch, and when I go home to play, I am very quickly humbled. As my games don't look a goddamn thing like these matches. No. Well, I cordially invite you to the Ranky Stack, Parker. How about that? I humble you can come and play me and, with me and Nick. We'll yeah. have a great time. Ling's also got invited recently, so... Yeah. So, I mean, here's one thing. We were discussing this. You said, yeah, there's been a couple people who've been banned from Ranky. And I said, why is that? You said, no, oh, they're just not very good. I have no, no. doubt I would meet that. No, no, no. We, we allow people in who are not very good. It's all about the vibes. Yeah. It's all about the if vibes. You're not we'll sure. anybody, no matter the skill level. It sounds like you're saying I passed the vibe check. Yes, That's you the do. Nice. Thing you've ever said to me. Now, for this map in particular, <laughs> Chalet has been the most played map here at the Six Invitational. 21 plays make this 22. It is defender sided, but not as close as we see from the, or not as much for the defenders. It's much closer. 55% of all rounds won by the defense. Bar gaming is the most played site, but the top three, kitchen deal. dining, wine cellar, snowmobile, bar gaming, are all played roughly the same. The only thing about this map that is different from a lot of the other maps is there is no attacker favored bomb site. Okay. Every single site is skewed towards the defenders even if the numbers aren't that great, 53% being the lowest. First pick is gonna be heard, so essentially on what is a coin flip map, the attackers could very easily go up 4-2 or even 5-1 on this first map. Typically when we, I, I wanna play Shalane and I see it being played, you don't wanna have one single member being isolated in a front and forward position. Playing solo bar, very risky. Having a teammate will help you, not so much. Ashen now, two rounds in a row, yep. very much on his lonesome, and Nick, he gets punished for it. Be okay, <gasps> forest to the floor, IQ doesn't matter. Scanner, you might see what you wanna shoot for, but he gets shut down instead. That might actually sway the outcome of this round because now the wall might not get opened up. It's hard to find them to get rid of that Kite Claw. There are no parking in peace and no Thatcher in play. The thing is, it was a big risk to try and get it from below, especially when they have top blue stairs and could shoot the Kite Claw from there. Yeah. 4v3 is another kills found by SSG. Forrest with both of them, and he's not too far off of Hot and Cold on that Tuberau, both looking through the floor that's been opened up. Now it's Nade to attempt an entry to office. The scene of the crime so far for uh -huh. Space Station, and there's the Zoto canister being used again horizontally. Not for the footprints, not for the nitro cell. JV92 has been down. Ali Pox with a kill. He knows that there's another playing around it. Nade is in there, but it's all up to Nade now. As both Ali Pox and JV92 are bleeding out. At the moment, just a little out of reach. Hot and cold up, and suddenly Nade can win this. If he can retrieve his teammates, Fultz will sit and wait as he doesn't have tons of information. JV92 is also retrievable. Boys, this was a 1v1. It's now a 3v1 for W7M. This team has been resurrected. And if you're a believer, you're putting all your faith in Fultz as he turns towards library stairs. One goes down, trophy stairs rather. Fultz now circling around. Diffuser in the hands of Nade. Fultz was spectacular on Cafe. Two rounds of dominance. He's got pings. Can he complete yet another clutch from behind? Sweeping oh. up with the shotgun, no! Oh. Nade shuts him down. W7M win the round. Bit of a shake there, no? Oh my. I mean, he had it, he was looking confident. It's a long face, Jack. <laughs> 
He had the position, but when it came down to the 1v1, Falls was shaking a bit there. I think he overcomplicated that massively when his 1 HP just full send, full commit. How have SSG, oh. if we go back from that, how have SSG lost that? Yeah. It was, uh, it was a key fight between J9 and uh, I think it was Nade on the Fermite. Okay, on the yeah, Fermite yeah. that walked in off his door. Yeah. Obviously, J9 gets that kill. The other two players are down. But what a round for SSG to lose. And you've got to say it. You've got to call it for what it is. That's a big thrown round. Oh, dear. I thought actually Philippe Ox made an, a, an incredible play to open this round up. He did end up downed, but he flashed into uh, he flashed into piano and then pushed up against the office wall to get the kill into office, yeah. and that just unlocked it all. The fact that Nade walks in, I believe it was Nade, who walks in, kills the Azami yeah. that's playing by piano, and there was no response from Space Station. When they're... Well, as we return here to the B stream, G2 off to a flying start here in the lower bracket, but not really. It was 4-1 down on Oricon. It was a very strong defense from Bliss to begin, but we anticipated that was going to be the case. Guys, we knew Oricon was going to be very defender-sided, so the strong start from Bliss managed our expectations. And of course, in the end, G2 brought it all the way back with an even stronger defense of their own. Yeah, G2 struggling to put a foot wrong in that second half. Um, Bliss finding it very challenging to find openings on the attack. Their defense was was great. Obviously not quite good enough to get the 5-1 lead, which ultimately could have been enough to push at least OT. Positive signs, I think, from both teams. Some key takeaways as well. I think that Bliss have it in them to push this second map, their selection, right to the wire. Mm. However, G2 are probably going to just get better and better as this game goes on. It's the fine margins. When you get to this kind of level, and you're going up against this kind of team, I mean, G2 is a team that's capable of winning this entire event. The win six invitational. So for a team like Team Bliss, you have to play at that 110% threshold every single round, every single play. That is what is required for this team because they're not naturally going to be good enough to beat G2. They need G2 to arguably play quite poor in certain areas and for them to then go an even higher level. Certainly certain moments here, like even on this Kids Dorm site, 5-5 five, five scoreline, clutch down to a two versus two. Had they won that, suddenly it's overtime confirmed and match point and suddenly changes the landscape. But instead they lose it. G2 just so clinical on that kitchen dining defense where we saw the small tower hold to virtue and he was insane to close that one out. He had a very good game. 12 and eight, first, uh, sorry, one and zero as well in first kills, 75% cost. The best player inside of the server was an Australian, but obviously Bliss ended up losing. <laughs> I see what you did there. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Virtue with the standout game and did a really good job. Small tail final round to close that out despite the best efforts of Bliss to counter that particular hold um, for the dining site. Still some positive signs again for Bliss with Oda topping the scoreboard. He's a player that had really slow start in this tournament, but he's found his footing. He's found his way through. But I think we need to see the likes of Brendo, who have been incredible throughout this event, really step it up. Map two, which mm. should be more comfortable for Bliss. Shallow is a map that they love, and I think an opportunity for them to bounce back could occur. It's going to be a challenge, but I think it's possible. Yeah, very well could be. All right, shall I, we go. Strong, strong map for Team Bliss, but the socials say it's still heavily in favor of G2, rightfully so. The defending champions looking very strong in their closeout on Oregon. Despite a 4-1 lead for Bliss, G2 did not really put a foot wrong on that run home, especially on their defense, of which they will be defending first to begin here on Chalet, which is obviously a map that does a little bit better for attacking than its counterpart in Oregon that we saw before. Capital gets banned out by G2, and most likely Bliss will respond with either Dockerby and or Ying. Obviously, we did see the Ying make it through last time. It's actually the Brava that gets banned out from Bliss. What are they cooking here? Uh, I mean, we might end up seeing a lot of Maestro play and Echo play in response. It would be pretty atypical for Bliss. But we cast our minds back maybe to like the... <laughs> Your like, first mistake. To the Dark Zero game we had earlier. It's probably also target ban as well for the way that G2 are going to look to sweep map and clear util. Fenrir as well will be bolstered if that escapes the ban phase as well. So, won't be the case. But yeah, Bravo and Intriguing ban. Don't hate it. Capital as well taken off. So, a little bit atypical again in terms of those attacking bans. But I'm intrigued to see how this one will play out. Bliss starting out on attack though. And on Oregon, they found it very difficult to clear 
key power positions. Now, I was talking to you a little bit off camera that I think that the dynamic does change a little bit more here on Chalet, where those power positions are perhaps a little less important than they were in the past. Yeah. Still a couple, you think mezzanine, top library stairs, half wall, etc. So they still exist, but I think they're a little bit less linear in their fashion compared to Oregon. And that should suit Blizz if they're feeling themselves here on this second map and they can bring the pace required. So away we go. Second map here for the lower bracket. Bliss, one map away from being sent home from six Invitational G2. You win this map. You book that day in the arena against Dark Zero. Here we go. G2 on the defense to begin, and we go straight to kitchen and dining to begin this round, to begin this second map. What can Bliss do on the attack? Well, they go straight for a four-man attack, a repick. Immediately change their approach into how they want to go into this round. But G2 over towards that mezzanine in terms of pressure on sight lines being opened up in towards library. Castle barricade as well in place, top library stairs, blocking off that position. Right now, the onus feels like it's got to be Bliss. Their map pick, can they respond from that last map's defeat? So this defensive lineup playing out as expected with the Brava band out, the Maestro comes out think as well with the Azamis um, coming out as well, alongside Castle Barricades. This need a lot of explosives. So they've brought the Sledge with nades, Ash Charges on Brendo, as well as, you know, Salm was on top of that if required, plus goes without saying the Flores for Terrors as well. So I like the pivot here from Bliss. They're responding directly to what they've seen in the prep phase from G2. And it will come down to ensuring that this clear is clean, they gain space off the back of it, and they apply pressure to G2. Pressure was the name of the game for both teams on that first map for Bliss. For the most part, they lacked it on attack. Straight in towards library, but those sight lines that I mentioned before opened up. Alamal takes advantage. Brendo loses his life. A player that you said probably to be looked to. Four team Blizz. Doki towards top library and really good positional map control for G2 on the defense. Library stairs and control, piano, the hallway as well. And Doki can get aggressive swings the window and Sage was not ready for that. The aggression again from G2. Paramount. It's there that we saw from Oregon, now here as well into Chalet. Really good position here with a triple stack of keeper barriers. Oh! But they get opened up. The air jab from Oda displacing Doki. Really good play. But he still hides behind that singular keeper barrier. I think another one got thrown as well, but another air jab. But I love the way that this was played basically by both players. Credit to both, but it's Benja that helps out eventually with a pinch. And Doki did a good job of surviving in a very difficult position. Fisher over towards Ego. He can't get through. Uno's going to go hunting down. You may as well. Strong start from G2 on Chalet. They mean business. <laughs> and you can see the reaction from G2. They were cooking over towards library stairs with the triple Kiba barrier set up. <laughs> Doki saying, let's relax with the Nomad in chat. You guys can't see it, but off screen. Um, you saw <laughs> the Azami catapulted back. Yeah. But there was still one barrier left standing. They couldn't clear it and Bliss try as they might. Eventually farmed by Benja in support. A funny round to kick things off. I'm sure even Bliss will chuckle at that. Doki doing a phenomenal job in locking down that position. And that is a pump up round for G2. 45% attacking win rate this map for Chalet when it comes to obviously offsetting that defensive meta that we see everywhere. This is the third best map. It's only 1% off the second best map. You could basically say it's the second best map, if you will, for attacking, which does mean for Bliss, very much the onus is on them to do well here early on. And G2, what do they do? They get into their face again. We saw that back when Oregon in their defense and what they can do. So aggressive. And we've seen G2 on this map already at this tournament where they go fast. They go very fast. And I already fear for what Bliss are going to have to deal with on the defense. They need attacking rounds early. Absolutely. Already four go one on that kitchen dining defense. And they go up above now, G2. Office and bedroom, the second round. So we'll see the Kali then in play for round number two from Oda. And this is a position that he has played throughout the tournament, where he'll get on what we call Jigsaw Balcony, just to the left of library, looking in towards and bathroom ooh. for the cross. What an angle, Fisho. And again, that's where Bliss have got to be able to learn a little bit. They know full well that G2 are getting aggressive. Solar, in terms of that Nitro Cell, a very common kind of Nitro Cell throw. Over from bedroom, in over towards the rappel. And Fisher guy was ready for it. So Benji gets shut down. You lose the warden. You lose that nitro cell utility. Then they even, never even got out. Now they can drone solar, get a bit of pressure, and put pressure directly over towards site. Another nitro then, this time in the hands of Uno. 
Seeing if perhaps he can dislodge the double window position. Flies out. But Wedderwall's able to dodge that one. And now relocate back above and play the cross. A good pressure position for Bliss to pivot the rest of the attack around. Alamal though with Keeper Barriers can look to fortify his position. Still four in the pocket. So he should be able to react to the clear here from Bliss. And he turns around to shut down Wettables. And I was just about to say, and now it's in hindsight, but Wettables playing a very key position there on that rappel outside big window in towards bedroom. Because you need that pressure. Helps those in solo try and get their way in. Now, of course, for G2, they can turn their attention very much to solo. We see that there from Virtue. Fishrope guy also falling down, originally playing that rappel position. And they just fall one by one like dominoes. G2 again clinical on the defense. Good positions from Virtue. We can see here on the replay how aggressive they can get at any moment in these rounds. And so far now you could say the alarm bells are ringing for Bliss. Their time at the six invitational has been a pleasant one, but it might be coming to an abrupt end at the hands of G2 here in the lower bracket. A two nothing start, already one nothing up in the series. This is Bliss's map pick and a map where attacking is far more achievable. But G2's defense has just looked so good. Attackers need to locate and defuse bombs. And it feels like we have seen this kind of storyline time and time again where teams from minor regions, whether it be O's or perhaps the likes of Korea, Japan, APAC as a whole, Asia as well, where they'll come into a matchup like this as the underdog. I'll show Promise Map 1. Then the second map, it really unravels and they're unable to fight their way back and really do themselves justice. First two rounds, phenomenal from G2. Don't put a foot wrong. Continue to aggress. And despite, at least in the second round, the initial burst of aggression with the Nitro and Solar shut down, Bliss with a very linear attack, unable to clear the likes of Elam out. There's always going to be a challenge for them to convert that one. So for Bliss, their problem solving skills put to the test. And for round three, see if they can unlock basement. This feels like close to Mustwood territory. Not just so much for the fact that they need to make it 1-2, but I think at this point, Bliss need a round. It feels like a lifetime ago when they got that round, Kid Storms, and then even prior to that, where they started so strong on Oregon, going up 4-1 on the defense. Can they find a way to break through what's been a very strong defense of G2, a very aggressive defense? You know, it's kind of like, I feel like the opposite approach of like a Virtus Pro that we saw earlier on. VP was so strong on that anchor site defense. G2 go a little bit more aggressive. They push forward. They go to these, these windows. They go through these doorways. They like to swing. You see them get aggressive early on just like that. Nitro Cell from Uno. Two minutes 15 into the round. Another opening kill for G2. So they are making things happen. It's not a case of Bliss walking in and, and you know fumbling and falling over themselves. It's just G2 are making their life miserable. Lovely shot back though from Fisher Guy. The DMR, he's able to get rid of Uno. And does make a bit of an entry as well. Open towards Trophy. Trophy inside of that kitchen. Now into dining with Benja close by on the Warden. Of course, this is basement, but you will typically see the roam up above, and that's exactly what G2 have done. Let's see them hide now. Three players from Bliss still yet to find a kill here on Chalet. If you're to take down G2, it needs to be a team effort. Wettables will double down, so Doki falls. Minute 30 on the clock. And this is the best position that Bliss have found themselves in for quite some time. You mentioned it right as well. Back on Oregon, struggling to collect rounds. It's been quite some time. There is a drought for Bliss. At the moment. Minute 20 then. As they confirm positions. Benja though. Inside of bar. He has been pinged though. Bliss aware of his position. They just need to Attackers nullify it. Just over 60 seconds remaining for what feels like an opportunity for Team Bliss. If G2 win this round, it's going to be a mental, mental Destroyment for Bliss. They, they, they're going to have to probably feel it at that point. Down 3 nothing. Certainly in a good position for this round. Over towards Big Garage. Wettables to open up some sight lines in towards wide. Fisher though, close to going out. The hands of that gas babe of Alamar, who still has two more. Another one thrown from this boiler position. Still one in pocket. 40 seconds remaining. Bliss need to find a way to win this round. It feels like it's paramount. It feels like it is a requirement at this point. Oh. But Virtue slaying his own kin. Eventually, Alamount went for the run out of Boiler, but Brendo was watching. And now in a two versus two with 20 seconds left, Fisho guy, so low on health, makes his way forward. Flash goes out, it's only one. Needs to play off of it immediately, but again, it's Virtue. How can you do this to your own kind? He's got no choice though. And Benji to finish it off a G2. Bliss are crumbling. 
And the one thing that G2 really have over their opposition at the moment are these star players that are stepping up in a high pressure situation. They have been here before. They know what it's like. Bliss fumbling into the unknown. As mentioned prior, heading into that round, three players still in donuts, whilst star players from their opposition continue to hold key parts of the map. And I alluded to it before that perhaps on a map like Chalet, it would actually favor Team Bliss because arguably there's less of those positions to clear and they should be a little less impactful. I take that comment back because we're seeing it time and time again already. G2, three rounds in, key parts of the map, even parts of the map that typically aren't held are on lockdown. Big play there from Virtue. Benja, of course, to cover. And Team Bliss, you can see that frustration beginning to set in. Yeah, and it's not just frustration, it's also the mental reality of the hurdle of very much approaching them, which is the, the daunting task of a massive comeback required against the defending champions. It's one thing to start well, and then G2 kind of claw all the way back, and you're trying to offset that, but now you're finding yourself staring down the barrel of defeat. Staring down the barrel of that 30-hour trip back home, it's a daunting one. Can they find a way to get a couple of rounds here? A required now couple of rounds. Absolutely now must win these rounds. Now, mind you, of course, defense still does prevail even on this particular map. But not so much so that G2 should be going up 5-1. Not that kind of territory. Tage immediately on the rappel opens up the castle barricade in towards bedroom. Again, it's kitchen and dining. This time around in the fourth round. Bliss had the advantage in that last round and still could not find a way to win it. As you mentioned, a couple of players on Donuts, Oda and Sage, two very critical players for Bliss. But right now, it's been the Virtue Show. And G2, again, just looking for these offensive plays. And just through Hatch with the Nitro Cell Rift as he try and get a play on the Repel. Virtue gets shut down, though, and Alamout as well not. Great start here for Bliss. This is the best chance they've had on this map. Must now win this round. But a lovely Nitro Cell from Benj down below. He'd been sitting there for some time. And at the very same time, Doki got a kill as well back onto Oda. It's a three on two though, with that kill from Sage. Doki pushing through bathroom, catching off Sage towards Solar. And Doki still alive, ducking and weaving in a one on two, certainly still winnable for Doki from this position in a one on one now because of the EDD placed by Benja down below. Brendo to plant, this would be heartbreak. If Doki's to win this round, and he certainly can, he forces Brendo off the plant. But he has the time to renavigate. Doki, though, could go for the drop, and he does, and he could break the hearts of Australians everywhere. What a play in a round from Doki! From above and down below, and with that, it could be Bliss's time at this tournament coming undone. Sensational from G2. They're here to defend the hammer, and Bliss, the blockade, pushed aside. It was a phenomenal start, a 5-3 advantage, but the retake up above by G2 meant that that plant could not go down just when it looked like Bliss finally might be able to get something on the board and keep the chances of the map alive. Heads now very much below water, and they need to find a life raft, otherwise this is going to unravel big time. It's already difficult enough as it is to sort of make your way back against any kind of opponent. Whether local, whether interregional, or at this particular event of Six Invitational. The fact you're going to try and do it against a G2 team, defending world champion, who are clearly playing some really solid siege, it makes it so difficult. Tactical timeout called, and I can't even imagine to begin what they are discussing here. I don't see many lips moving. Maybe it's simply just a, a circuit breaker to try and deny this momentum of G2 that they've already clearly established. Massive round from Doki. At that point, it was a 5 on 3 got two cow, uh, kills pretty quickly. Obviously, really good work as well from Doki over towards bathroom, and then eventually holding that vert was the difference maker. The fact that Brendo was playing from a below position couldn't really do much more, but in fairness, he still had like 90 seconds in the round. He didn't have to go for that plan. He could have actually gone for a retake up above. Doesn't opt to do that, goes for the plan, and eventually then denied. 4 nothing to G2 on the defense on a map of Chalet, which is Bliss's map pick. And as good as Bliss have been at this tournament, and as many commendations as they will get from the wider community for an APAC team to make top eight, one from an, the most minor of all regions in APAC, honorable losses do you not much. They don't do much for you. You don't get to the main stage off honorable losses. The G2, though, very much now three rounds away from booking a main stage date, the lower bracket quarterfinal against Dark Zero. And what a matchup that would prove to be.
the winner of this game to take on Dark Zero in the lower bracket quarterfinal. I just said that. Did it? Did you? I did. Oh, my <laughs> Look, it's hard for us Australians. I'm stewing in disappointment at the moment, understandably so. It's a rough watch for us, but on the flip side, well, it's awesome to see G2 really putting the hammer down. Yeah, understand that, of course. But mind you, the way G2 are playing, it makes it really difficult to really be too disappointed because it would be more disappointing if G2 were kind of stumbling over themselves if we still couldn't get the job done. G2 are playing really, really well. And I can't remember who tweeted it out before this game began. I can't recall. I think it might have been Doki. But clearly said they respect this. They're here for a reason. They're going to take this as seriously as they can. And we've seen that on Oregon, now also on Chalet. G2 are playing as good as they possibly can. They are absolutely giving their all here. And that's why we are seeing the golf in difference between these two teams. I said at the start of this broadcast, G2 probably needed to play a little bit poor and Bliss needed to play really, really well. So far, G2 oh. have played amazing. The Vigil scan from Uno. Yeah, smart. Looking to try and push through the Bs. Run the funnel down. up, so it won't come into fruition, but that could have been one hell of a play. And the Bs caught him as well at the end there as well, on the way out with the scan dissipating. So he did get pinged over towards Piano. Logic Bomb did go out. And so, yeah, his position was known by Fisho. He had no idea that Alamau was also inside of that position towards Office. Sage may be thinking off the back of the Flash, but he's already closed, holding that doorway. Alamau just driving the stake through the heart of Team Bliss and getting rid of Wettables. Alamau wants that main, main stage in front of his home crowd, but momentarily, Brendo with a double kill makes it a one on two. Do mind. Position known over towards Piano in terms of Virtue and Benja. The information they have against Brendo in the one on two would require something special here from the kid. MVP yesterday for Bliss against Wolves. Probably needs the biggest clutch of his career here to save this round for Team Bliss against Virtua, against Benja with 40 seconds, a kit in hand and a prayer as he makes his way down library but through mud. It's Benja, it's G2, and they're making very quick work of Bliss. Five rounds in a row, Bliss silenced. And that's off the back of a tactical timeout as well. And if they wanted to keep this map and the dream of SI alive, they probably needed at least two attacks. One, even if they get it now, unlikely to cut it. Outclassed, outperformed. But this is the expected result. G2, hugely successful over in EU. The defending champions as well. The expectation is on them trying to bend that hammer as best as possible. I believe over on the primary stream, W7M and SSG going... Down to the wire. Perhaps map three has been blown out a little bit. So, I'm curious for spoilers, but I believe W7M have really garnered a pretty strong lead and might be on the precipice of closing that one out shortly. So, there's every world in which, depending on how the other matches shape up in that lower He's bracket, finish first. we got a G2 W7M lower bracket match, which would be pretty yeah, insane. Yeah, of course, prior to that, though. Uh, the other matchups would be Sonics versus W7M and Dark Zero G2. Talk about some massive elimination games there on the main stage. Of course, in the upper bracket final, you've got FaZe Clan and Verdus Pro. Big matches require big teams, and G2 is the biggest of them all, the defending champions. And on the verge of just swatting away Team Bliss to send home the final APAC team, and doing so in significant style, 5 nothing. Final round of this half, looking for the clean sweep. But Oda finds the opening kill on Todoki. Shutting down the man who had the big clutch earlier on in this half. Five versus four, but not the first time Bliss have had an opening kill. And so far, every time G2 have been able to bring it back and win the round. Alamau's position revealed off the back of the Hive launcher from Fisher. I'm gonna put this position at bay. Your window has been disrupted off the back of the Ash charge. Two minutes then. Can Bliss find anything? Impact out. Virtue able to down the Oda. No points enabled, of course, so he won't know at least for now. Unless he got a sound cue. That leaves us then in a four versus four. But Fisho will find Uno. Yeah, and Oda brought back up, so it is an actual five versus three here. Brendo then compounding the lead for Bliss in a two. Player remain for G2, Virtue and Alamau. And yet somehow, part of me still thinks they can win this round very comfortably. Virtue then gets one to back up my opinion of that fact. 
And another exchange to happen. And Alamath is so swift from Piano through the line. He gets the kill onto Brendo. And they still have not been able to dislodge Virtue. And suddenly that opinion now looking to become a reality. Pop up from Virtue. Not the first shot. There's another one over towards that big window. Double stack mezzanine. They swing together. And together they get the kill. On to Virtue. Down to Alamout. Already clutched up inside an office so far in this half. In a one versus two. To keep the sweep alive here. To get to my 6-0 lead. No. Shut down. Denied by Wettables. You almost sound a little bit disappointed that the Australians <laughs> denied the perfect half. Come on, man. Why are you looking at me like that? I'm a G2 fan now. G2 Esports. 5-1 <laughs> half for G2. As they go into the attack now, shall lay a very, very strong half from them. And putting themselves in a good position, I think, going over to that main stage where they can take the momentum of this match, where they've been so good, not really making that many mistakes. I mean, obviously, you give Bliss a little bit of credit there at the end of that last round of the half. Really good job to push in, get some good entry kills, open things up. Finally, a couple of those early contact engagements going their way. Feels like that hasn't really happened at all on Chalet. Or at least if it did happen, they could never capitalize. This time they did. They get that one solitary round. Over to Bark Games, begin their defense now, of which they need to win five plus rounds. At minimum to get it to six for OT. It's a daunting ask against G2. And a very difficult one. Hard to really set the expectations that they will be able to do it. If they can, would be one of the greater comebacks that we've seen from an Oceanic team. Would it be the biggest comeback in the history of esports? Probably not. <laughs> it would be It would be large. It would be quite large if that happens. G2 very much in the driver's seat. And the other thing as well, very quickly, G2's attacks on Chalet have been very quick. Very fast pace. Bender on the black spear, kind of suggesting again, like they are more than happy to take this fight early for Doki on the wrong side of it. Straight over to that big window position inside the game. As I mentioned, they like to go fast in these rounds. I wouldn't even be surprised if Benji goes revolt to try and take on Bistro Guy. And he's going to meet the black beard, but doesn't matter. Shield in the face or not. Head is taken off. Good start here from Bliss. Understanding the mission here, which is to defend these fast paced push attacks from G2. They get the opening two kills onto Benji and Doki. And straight in towards library for Uno. Blitz have nothing to lose, nothing to hide. So they may as well play as aggressive as they feel comfortable in looking to try and persuade G2 into a different play style. Over time, perhaps they may look to just slow it down a little bit. See so how they try to fight their way back into the round because it's hard to count them out. A three versus five, sight hatch open. When we see G2, maybe at this point in time, just say, screw it. Let's aggress in towards the side and see if we can flush out this defense. Perhaps not the worst decision. I think the defense is still a little bit fleeting from Bliss, who are still scattered around the map. But G2 won't know that unless they gain information. Uno has spotted one behind the mirror window, I believe. Clearing that, though, a whole different story. Yeah, yellow pinged out. Just saw it there from our POV of Uno. So he could go for the drop. No one really playing below. So he can hit the drop kill just walls off that right side of the window, which has been broken, by the way. It's so obviously can't see through, hence why we are seeing Fisher guy holding that left side angle. Sage gets a kill onto Alamo, really now compounding the advantage that Bliss have in this seventh round. Virtue tries to just make his way in. Doesn't quite work. Nitrocell neither too. Good kill from Uno, but then traded up above from that mezzanine position of Wettables. Let's find a second round and a second in a row. Not quite comeback territory just yet. Far too early for that. But... It does need to be one round at a time mentally for Bliss. That's the way they're going to approach this. Forget the scoreline. An old wise head from the Oceanic region once said, it's 95% mental. And that's what it needs to be for Bliss in this moment. One round at a time. Keep that mental in check. Back yourselves in. You're on the defense as well. G2 have to come to you. I am not going to utter the C word. C word being comeback. Until the scoreline is 5-5. Five, five. There'll be a lot of other C words as an Australian. Come back. I'm not uttering that until it comes down to a 5-5 uh, five, five scoreline. I simply think that G2 will have the prowess to just lock this out eventually. Um, especially when those tertiary sites begin to be exposed. I know in Charlie tertiary sites is a bit of a loose term to use because arguably every objective is defendable. But the sites in which Bliss more specifically are less comfortable in defending. Mm. That's where G2 will be able to exploit fine space. Um, but again, intrigued to see, right? The Bliss continue to double down here, aggress off site, try to disrupt E2. I think that's the play. 
because the moment you give G2 space and the opportunity to set up those plays in a late round for the execute, that's where they really thrive. So we'll see Flush now go for spawn picks. Double down, triple down. And I think that's the way to go about it. Yeah, they have to back themselves in to be aggressive here. Yeah, 2-5 score line. You don't want to mention that comeback word, but clearly something that Bliss need to do. Have to be winning these rounds now. It cannot allow G2 to get this match point. It would be just devastating in terms of the mental. When you see match point on top of your screen for four rounds in a row, that's really, really hard to overcome that, especially when you have the deficiency between the two teams. The differential, I should say. The one round of the time mentality. The case for Bliss for G2. Well, they themselves can't really get too caught up in a potential comeback. They also need to just focus one round at a time. Alam out with the drone through front door. As G2 try and find some information, they've already lost four drones. Barbed wire spotted over towards the stairs, and Doki's made his way into the hallway. This is where Bliss need to be responsive and find these kills. Oda, through that dining hallway, has kind of got himself into a tricky position. Could get pinched, especially if G2 look to try and take this position of the map. This is, of course, though, office and bedroom. Oda is trying to deny that kind of kitchen and dining presence for the vert denial. So a minute 45 then remaining on the clock. G2 with decent ground, but can they play off it and translate it in towards some site pressure? Doki will elect to lurk below, and there is a player inside of dining. Oda, will he be able to withhold this pressure? Distraction front door. Logic Bomb 2 comes through. So position revealed. Oda spots Doki late. But the swing comes through. Doesn't matter. That two also denied. And the trade won't land for G2. Virtue, the one and only player from G2 to find oh. a kill in this round. It's Wettables to fall. Now a four versus three with Brendo on the lurk. Yeah, a couple of kills he can get here. There's one and then just run back down. There's another one as well. Close right. Coming down the stairwell. The big, big kill. Because that was kicked down as well. So Alamal gone, no hard breach. I mean, no, you still got Uno. Well, never mind. Went a little fast there. That was right the first time. Three on one now with Virtue the solo. And Bliss are on the verge of finding three rounds in a row. Thing is, we're rather defender side of Chalet. Not too surprising considering the nature of the tournament so far. Nine kills for Virtue. He's been great. And G2 have been pretty good at these clutch plays. He's got 40 seconds. Kit though, quite far away. Over towards this front door position. Still needs to make his way up above. And with only 30 seconds remaining, this now becomes very difficult because Bliss have done the right thing and gone straight to site. Playing around office and bedroom, Sage in the site itself, same with Brendo, and then Fisher Guy playing piano. All positions covered, barbed wire gives away position, and sound cue, they now know Virtue's coming from Mezzanine. This should be a very easy round win for Bliss to find their third here on Chalet. Valkyrie camera being watched as well by Wettables. Bliss have a read. Virtue take very low. Bliss will claim their third round as they slowly chip away at that deficit. Yeah, and that's, I mean, yeah, slowly. It feels like it's taking a lifetime, doesn't it? You know, there's still two rounds behind. And at any moment, G2 can just pop off, go super fast pace. We've seen that on Chalet. We know what their attacks can look like when they're absolutely in tune as a team. Three to five, Bliss though making a very slight comeback here. And I will mention that word, considering it did start 5-0 in terms of the deficit they found themselves in. For G2, the attacks have been a little bit stalled out. Credit to Bliss, they're holding good positions, making it a little bit annoying and difficult for G2 to get inside and get that map control. Clearly something that Bliss have worked to try and deal with. And we saw that from Oda early on, playing that dining position, making it annoying for G2. They couldn't get that vert control. They couldn't really get a good foothold inside of the map. A couple of fist bumps, but no real smiles for Bliss. Understanding the task at hand is still a very difficult one. So spoiler alert then over on stream a, the result of that W7M SSG game. W7M out on top. Mm. And so that means we will have two Brazilian games in front of their home crowd, plus the third likely to be the defending world champs. So I tell you what, that Friday is looking very, very tantalizing. Yeah, it certainly is. And obviously, commiserations for SSG. I think they had a very, very good tournament. They go down to obviously a very good team, having won the last two majors, W7M. They got up against Sonics. What a game that's going to be over in, of course, the arena on the main stage. So that's now five out of six teams confirmed in terms of the presence heading into the finals. We've got one more team to confirm. Right now it's G2 in the box seat. One map up, two more rounds away. But Bliss making a little bit of a comeback here on the defense of Shelley, proving to be difficult to deal with. And at the very least for Bliss again, when we talk about honorable losses, well, this is quite honorable. It looks quite devastating. Down five to nothing. They've been able to win the last three rounds. Oda towards the mezzanine in towards library and again holding these aggressive angles 
Why? Because G2 like to go quick, so Oda wants to catch him off guard, but even better was Benja there. On the Jackal, doesn't even need to find the feet, just gets the head onto Oda. Sage looking for a response over towards Piano with the acute angle held by Doki with DMR. Catches Sage off guard, two and six for Sage. He's not on at the moment, unfortunately, for Bliss. And a three versus five now, G2. For the first time in this half, look really strong on the attack. Yeah, Sage lurked into a false sense of security. The rest of the Bliss forced into making a play. G2 now mere seconds away from map point, series point. In their journey to defending the hammer. They win this. Dark Zero waits. And at the moment, they look formidable. Benja to find Ow. three here in the ninth round. Fisher guy slain. Flawless for G2. Three match and series points now for G2. They look towards Dark Zero. They look towards that main stage. They feel it's their right. And so far, it certainly is with the way they've played in this series. Bliss have been commendable. A 7-5 loss on Oregon. Despite a 5-0 start, they win three in a row. Keep this interesting. But it seems as if G2 start to flex their muscles whenever they feel like it and can pull away. Three match points. You can see in that previous round, Bliss trying to aggress. With Oda, the double down from Sage, who got lulled into this unfortunate engagement, which wasn't favorable. And then from there, G2 were just absolutely clinical. Uh, they didn't slow down the pacing, instead just rolled through that momentum for the rest of the round, and Bliss couldn't make a play in response. So they now have a three-round buff-up. G2 look formidable. And on the live stage, despite the crowd likely to be against them, especially if they are to advance against W7M, they will lean in. Well, they're still that storyline. They're still going to get through Dark Zero first. Dark Zero looked pretty good today. They did look pretty good. And Canadian will be hungry to lift the hammer for a third time, no doubt. And they still need a seventh round here. Bliss already showing that they do have the capabilities of winning three defensive, two defensive rounds. Can they make it three? That's exactly what is required here. Then you got the one attacking round for Bliss. Then one, two defensive round. They won three in a row. They're going to need to now do that again. If they are to keep their SI life alive. See Doki just waiting for a potential run out, expecting that from Bliss if they are to contest the soul of Rapal, but it's Sage elsewhere. He'll contest Benja. Hard the primary hard breach, hard breach yeah. taken down, and Sage, despite having a disappointing map thus far, oh. able to claim his third pick. Doki almost fighting one there. Through the power, okay, I think that was onto Brendo, running around on the lesion. Outside in the exterior balcony. A bathroom with the entry now made through Doki. He's had that massive clutch in that first half. Alamal. Over towards big window on the mezzanine. G2 starting to get a bit of that map control through bedroom side. Of course, it's bar games here for this match point round. With Bliss keeping all of their presence over towards that library side. Sage still top library stairs with the shield in play. Means it's a very strong position that G2 will eventually have to clear. Virtue droning through office and Uno with an angle. Where the balls that step forward? It's a dangerous one. Don't repeat it. <laughs> Stark on an island, can't get back to that position. Of course, he's now a little bit wary of the fact that his position is vulnerable at the mezzanine near the chimney. Doki now through uh, piano. 90 seconds left in the round. Is this the round that G2 say goodbye to Bliss? So Dockerby Lion and the Grim in play. G2 will look to constrict this defense, put them on islands, pick them apart. Oh, Easier said than done at the 4v5, but as they push through live, they oh. should be able to get the oh. first, but Sage what? wins it out. Virtue elsewhere does find Wedibles who's looking to aid and support this position. Sage rips the Nitro, but then falls back to the waiting arm to Fisho. Red Dot elsewhere taken low. Minute on the clock. And G2 in similar positions in the past have been able to bring these rounds back. But with Uno falling, this could oh, be a Bliss round. Well, he's back up. He's slow. 50 seconds, then he can still do some work. No EE1Ds, but a flash in hand. We saw from Sage, the overswing top library stairs. I thought he was going to lose his life because of it, but he got one and then he stayed alive. Four of three advantage. Attackers 30 seconds though. Time the biggest factor here now for G2. Alamal to push through library stairs. Uno with the diffuser in hand does have the hatch opened up. No more hive launcher. Canisters available and Virtue goes for the drop. Full wipe. Someone's going to be watching this drop. Fisho guy. Was able to get that kill from Bar. Virtue still got at least one of the Brendo, and his life is still alive. Surely they can't win out from this position. There's no so little time. 
Alamel successfully makes his way down, wants yeah, to put the pressure in towards Bar, but he can't even make his way through the doorway because Sage switches on with a flank. Originally strong above on top library, went all the way down to basement and then back up through library stairs. Three in the round, and Bliss, stay alive. Brando able to drop the Diffuser in the hands of Uno. So from that point onwards, the remaining members of Virtue and Alamal had to try and frag out the two versus three, not put in those positions. Fisher did a really good job as well to not give away his life for free, able to find safety behind the bar. And Bliss able to just draw out this series for at least one more round. They were down 5 nothing. Now it's 6-4. Mentioned the fact that if this comeback was to become a reality, how significant it could be. In that moment, Sage goes for the wide swing rather than holding the shield. It seems aggressive because it naturally is, but is also then able to catch G2 off guard. They're more focused on the shield, not for him to be five meters away from it. And so therefore he wins out. And then a really good play to go to basement, go down towards blue and then pop up late round. 4-6. Fortunately, the reality for Bliss, though, is they still cannot put a foot wrong. They cannot make any mistakes. They can't give open kills to GT. They can't give pathways in. And these tertiary sites now become the real hurdle, the real litmus test for Bliss. It's bedroom, it's office. It's still two match points, two series points for G2. Position secured. So the Azami then in play for the match point round. That's a piece of utility that Benja will be tasked with clearing. Those Rotero drones on the floor is. I will say Bliss perhaps not leaning as heavily into the bar as I anticipated, but again, that might just be the default cameras. Valky also is in place, so understandable. And we don't want those played out. Did you say Bravo? Oh, yeah. Being banned out, but yeah. they're not bringing Maestro. They're not playing Echo. Reloading. Oh yeah, leaning into the Bravo ban. Get you. Virtue though, gets the opening kill onto Sage, and that's the Warden too. Big kill, Virtue. Very clearly the MVP in this series. From Oregon now into Chalet. Red pings galore, the pressure mounting onto Wettables and the Azami starting to feel the pressure. Fisher guy, massive kill onto Alamount. Oda can't respond, but they certainly can from Alphys, but they lose two for the one. Brendo now the one. In this match point moment, needs to deny the plant off the yellow ping. The impact grenade won't do enough. The kill, no, does not come through. Plant down, Brendo, you need the biggest clutch of your career. And it's oh so difficult now with the Repel in play for G2. They are now mere seconds away from pushing their way through the GG from Alamount and rightfully so for the defending champions. They get through Team Bliss. It didn't take too much. And they booked their date in that lower bracket quarterfinal to the main stage goes the defending champions. And we say goodbye to the final APAC team of this tournament. What a performance from G2. Able to steamroll their opposition. It was the expectation and they fulfilled it. Done in two maps. Disappointing, of course, still for Team Bliss who gave it their all and didn't give up until the final round. But G2, simply too good. Simply too good. The irony is the best player inside of the server through the two maps was an Australian, but it was on the side of G2. Virtue, the MVP, so consistent. For Team Bliss, you take away some honorable commendations a very good tournament top eight for an apac team the only apac team from the minor of most minor regions of apac but not good enough of course against g2 against the juggernaut the defending champions make their way to the main stage it wouldn't be a main stage without the defending champions w7m make it through g2 make it through and we get a top six that is tantalizing yeah, and as this game and as this series went on, you could see the frustration build more and more for Bliss, who just couldn't keep pace with G2. That was the big thing for me that really stood out, that on attack, G2 brought that aggression. Bliss found it difficult to tame. And then even when the, the sides flipped, whether it be on Oregon or here on Chalet, G2 just kept that pressure up. They made few mistakes, and the ones that they did, they still did an okay job at sort of patching up and it, against the team. Like Bliss, they could get away with it. I don't think this was a case where Bliss played bad. I really don't. I think G2 were just absolutely playing some of their better Siege. Not really making that many mistakes. Siege sometimes can be about teams making mistakes and others punishing it. But I think in this instance, it was just clearly G2 were the better team. Statistically coming into this game, they were superior to Team Bliss in every single statistical category that we track. They were the heavy favorites. The underdogs from Australia, unfortunately, didn't have enough bark in them. 
They tried their best, 7-5 on Oregon, 7-4 on Chalet. They were close, yet not close enough. And that's the story typically for APAC at these major events. But hey, top eight's not bad. You give them the, the commendation. The honorable losses are there. Pat on the back, good job for Bliss. But now it's time for the real big dogs to do the barking at the main stage. Big dog. <laughs> okay. okay, sorry. No. Yeah, Virtue, look, 130 APS. Huge performance from him. We backtrack as well again to Oregon where he was also Ooh, yeah. really, really um, strong as well. 82% cost. So consistent impact for him throughout the match. And uh, when you look at the stats for Bliss, if this shows your top EPS, you know you're in trouble. Yeah, and also top entry, apparently, with 3-0 on the first kills. I mean, 73% cost. He has been a veteran of the scene for a long time in Fisher Guy. And he had himself a very good tournament, but Virtue had himself a sensational match. The clear MVP from the two maps of Oregon and Chalet. And look, 7-5, seven, 7-4, seven, not total beatdowns, all things considered. G2 had to work all these games. Bliss certainly gave them a challenge, and a challenge that they were able to deal with quite comfortably. And for G2 now, of course, they move forward. Lower bracket quarterfinal main stage against Dark Zero, in which the competition then jumps up significantly from Bliss to DZ. Fortunately for G2, they didn't really struggle in this series. It would have been questionable had they won this in a close fashion, say 2-1, close third map, you'd be kind of worried for them. But they got through Bliss pretty comfortably. And I think that match now against DZ is very much a 50-50. Well, he is the finals bracket for Six Invitational 2024. As you can see in the upper final, it is the Brazilians of FaZe Clan to try and take down VP for their spot in the grand final in front of a home crowd. And then as we look at the lower bracket, four teams seated there currently. G2 slot in against a, G, uh, a Dark Zero. I look very hungry today um, to put in a good performance for NA. Um, Sonics, their counterparts, will take on W7M. So you look at all three matches on the Friday and each of them just with so many exciting stories. Yeah, I mean, each of them as well with storylines that have progressed throughout this tournament. Fortunately, group stage, then into playoffs. We get to see a lot of these teams. It's not a matter of some of these teams having some time off, qualifying early, getting an extra stage advantage. So all of these teams have been able to make really good storylines, have really good performances. I can't wait to see what that upper bracket final is going to look like in terms of FaZe Clan and Virtus Pro. Winner goes to the grand final. You avoid that lower bracket gauntlet and a gauntlet, isn't it? Like you see all of those little question marks. That's a lot of best of threes that need to be played, that need to be made for the likes of W7M and G2. Now, of course, we can't have like a G2 W7M grand final. That can't happen, but they could meet in a lower bracket final to determine who does go to the grand final. Wouldn't that be sensational? Uh, of the teams remaining, of course, congratulations. Congratulations. What an SI that they are all having. For those that we say goodbye to in terms of SSG today, along with Bliss, two good friends, actually. Those teams get along quite nicely. Obviously, we say goodbye to them. Yeah, unfortunate, of course, for both of those rosters. But I think it's pretty fair to say that the bracket as it's set now makes a lot of sense based on expectations heading yeah. in. Not too many curveballs. Um, and super excited to see, especially if the Brazilian teams can perform in front of their home crowd. And with that, we say goodbye to the playoffs. Thank you so much for everyone tuning in today. We had some insane matches on both the B and A streams. Before we do go, though, I've got the Intel play from this most previous match, which I'm actually not even sure what it will be. Good plays. Probably nothing like our first match on the B stream. It was Virtue, apparently. Small tower, 3K. And that was enough to, of course, solidify things on Oregon. So... This was not really a series that had super high, massive plays. That in itself was nice, um, but nothing like our earlier match. <laughs> That's for sure. There were no, there were no, uh, there was no magic. No drops. explicitives. No. no, no swearing in that moment. Not in there, this match. Virtue. Any um, final words from you, Michael? No, uh, pretty much what I said before. Right? Super excited to see the Brazilian teams in front of their home crowd. There was a, some trepidation that perhaps they might not actually make in front of the crowd or we might only have one team or whatever the case may be. But FaZe W7M, can they fly the flag for their home nation? Can G2 defend the hammer? Can Dark Zero and Canadian win their third? I mean, where do I stop? Where do I end? I don't know. Storyline after storyline after storyline. You'll have to keep watching, of course, Six Invitational heading to the finals, heading to the main stage to see how those storylines develop. For us here, though, of course, for the playoffs on the B stream again. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you in the main stage here for Sao Paulo, Brazil.